This week in IT SparkCast, NVIDIA is making bank, the FTC has your backups back, and hackers are weaponizing AI. Well, duh. Greetings and welcome to IT SparkCast. I'm your host, John Barger. And I'm your host, Lou Schmidt. Let's go find out what's going on out there. It's Tuesday, September 2nd. IT Sparkcast News Bites is the digest of the IT news over the last week with insights, opinions, and a little sarcasm from two experts, each with over 20 years' experience working in IT or for IT vendors. And now for the News Bites. Well, we've been tracking this story for quite some time, and here is the latest chapter in it. It began with Apple revealing that the UK was attempting to backdoor all of iCloud for some secret reason, which they wouldn't tell anybody what it was. There's been a lot of back and forth and issues on it. And recently, this week, we got this from the FTC, which came to us via bleeping computer, which is hold the line on encryption. The FTC is pushing back against foreign companies trying to weaken encryption and privacy in American companies. So it, it, for America, it's not an option. So what's going on? So Andrew Ferguson, who is the Federal Trade Commission chairman, sent letters to major tech players, including Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, Meta, and Google and Signal and Slack and X and more, warning them not to comply with foreign demands that undermine encryption or censor users. Uh, they specifically called out laws like the EU Digital Services Act, UK's Online Safety Act, and the investigatory, investigatory Powers Act, warning that aligning global compliance with these would erode America's privacy. So the tail does not get to wag the dog, kids. Um, if you're here in an American company, you have, you're an American company. You have to follow the American law. Why this matters is there's legal risks in, in weakening encryption. Uh, John, you and I have certainly seen a number of efforts around this. Um, somebody's going to get hacked because of this. And then who do they sue? Are you going to sue? Yeah. So we talked about this uh, a few times. And I'm going to put, a, if you're on YouTube, I'll put a link above Lou's head right now, where we did a hot take on what was going on with the IPA. And again, Lou stated it as a bitter IPA uh, going over really in, the, uh, in the UK. And the start of this story where it got leaked that Apple was being forced to either uh, open up their encrypted iCloud or stop encrypting. And that was becoming a problem. Apple's response to that was to stop encrypting UK citizens' backups. And I was questioning whether that was enough because at the end of the day, what the UK government was looking for was not the UK citizens as much as other people uh, across the globe. So this the law... The IPA said that they were requiring a key to unlock any content in an encrypted storage in the cloud. Whether that, and this was for Apple to, that we know of, but we're assuming that they were going after all the other vendors as well. And it's just the part of the law was that you weren't allowed to talk about it. So that's why we didn't know if it was the other vendors. So this is pretty nasty stuff. And it's surprising that it's coming from a modern Western uh, country like this. But it is what it is. And it's great to see that the U.S. government is stepping in and saying, no, we're not doing this. And you know, whatever side of the political aisle you stand on, I think that you have to say standing up for privacy and encryption and, uh, and the security of a, a, uh, a U.S. company is paramount. And that's something that we really need to, to applaud. Uh, absolutely. And the FTC emphasized that U.S. companies must uphold strong data security and transparency, even if it complicates international compliance, right? So let the U.S. government negotiate this stuff. Don't get run roughshod. So the, and there is a meeting going, that's going to happen actually this week to discuss how they'll navigate conflicting global requirements without weakening privacy protections for American users. So the good news is, is the FTC isn't going unilateral on this. They're talking directly to the companies that are impacted by this. They want to work out a strategy where we can go forward unified in a way that if you're an American, your data and your privacy is protected 
from overreaching bureaucrats from some other part of the world. Um, so that is really good news. Uh, keep an eye on that. We're watching it closely. We will update you as we get more information. Yeah. And now, John, uh, what else do... Uh, what else is after our encryption and privacy? Yeah, so uh, we've been talking about this recently. We've been talking about AI, and, and actually just in last week's, uh, I think it was in the CVE of the week, where we talked about the use of AI coming as both in the form of protecting you and, and a lot of companies out there using AI as their uh, as their security tools, where I also said we were going to see hackers start using AI as part of their their threat toolbox. And now that is uh, being found out there. So we've I got two different stories, both from the Hacker News. And if you're not following them on X or wherever it is, or if you're going to their website, it's thehackernews.com. We'll have links in the show notes to that. And if you're on YouTube, you'll see uh, some of these stories up on the screen right now. But two different stories. Uh, one is that Anthropic was used to create a automated theft and extortion access across critical sectors. So they actually weaponized the Anthropic clawed AI tool to actually have it orchestrate end-to-end -end attacks targeting 17 different organizations that included healthcare, emergency services, religious centers, and government bodies, and uh create ransom demands over half a million US dollars. So Claude handled the reconnaissance, the credential harvesting, the network infiltration, the crafting of custom uh, tunneling tools and tailored extortion notes, dynamically acting as both str the strategic operations and the, the actual tactical operator. So this is really incredible that we're seeing a tool as powerful as Claude. As Claude is one of the top level, you know, in the top five, uh, you know, they all changed places, you know, back and forth. But Claude's right up there in the top five of the most powerful AI systems out there with, with ChatGBT and Gemini and X and uh, uh, Grok and all those. So how did they catch this attack? So in the articles that I read, Anthropic isn't saying how they discovered it, but they did discover the operation and it may be that they were tipped off or they discovered it through their own backdoor capabilities, but then they were able to disrupt the, the attacks and work with authorities in order to do that. So they actually found that there was North Korean actors that were involved and they were able to shut those things down. You know, we don't know exactly how, how they did discover it, but I think that it's important to note that, that with these tools, you know, you want a level of privacy, but you also have to have a level of protection. And that seems to be what's going on here now. Well, if we can be clear about this, one thing was, is that this attack actually utilized the cloud model. Correct. It was more yes. than just generating. We've seen a couple of uh, places where vibe coding is sort of generated a piece of code that went into malware. This is, I think, the first time we've documented the actual cloud itself being used for the reconnaissance and targeting. Yeah. And so in the article, the Hacker News article, they use the term vibe hacking. Now, it's interesting. I, I would expect that going forward, we're going to start seeing protections put in place where when people start making these type of requests of the different LLMs, that something gets flagged. But we also know that uh, as those types of flags get put in place, that there are workarounds to them. So we know that there are flags in place that if a 10th grader asks for ChatGPT to write a term paper for it, it says, well, I won't do that, but I'll help you prepare for it. There are ways to work around that so that you can get it to write a term paper without it knowing that that's what it's doing. So the same type of thing will, will happen here. But the other interesting case is that cybersecurity firm ESET uncovered a tool called PropLock, which is the first AI, first known AI-powered ransomware that utilized OpenAI's uh, GPT OS 20B model, which is their open model that they released that can be run locally. And it was used to generate uh, malicious Lewis scripts in real time on infected systems. So this is malware being placed onto systems, again, using ChatGPT. And that allowed the malware to dynamically create scripts for uh, file enumeration and exfiltration and encryption using spec 128 bit uh, encryption, and then using the determinist nature of cross-platform compatibility um, and generate scripts to make 
detection highly challenging. So in the olden days, in the olden days, <laughs> two years ago, before uh, the olden days, <laughs> in the old days, you'd have these polymorphic uh, uh, tools that would change the the way they they work. They would change their own uh, bit sets so that they would be harder to detect. This way, with the the with a AI tool, it can change its attack vectors and what it does on the fly. So it's going to be a lot harder to detect. So this is really a smart way. Now, currently, this is actually a proof of concept. It's not actually deployed in the wild, but it shows that it can be done and will be done. So again, something to be more aware of. Now, what this means is, is that we are in a war of escalation when it comes to security, and it's going to take a, a Good, a good guy AI to help fight against the bad guy AIs. And we're just going to keep seeing this escalation keep happening. And it means that we need to be con continuing to research and develop and just put more effort into this. So it's, it's good to see that that's happening as well. If I was to net out two things I would take away from this. The first thing is, is that AI is the AI that allows you to scale your processes uh, much, much better, uh, built on top of the cloud, also allow your attackers to scale. And the second thing is you have to start inspecting traffic coming from AI clouds. Yeah, You have to. Yeah, You can't assume that it is all benign. Uh, if you're not already doing deep packet inspection and uh, targeted whitelisting, blacklisting on this stuff, you need to start looking at it. Yeah. Well, and uh, even if it's not an attack, it might be unauthorized use of AI tools uh, that, that you've need to be aware of anyway. So it's always a good thing to be checking that stuff. Absolutely. And speaking of AI, who is really winning this war? It's the guys building the tools. It's just like the gold rush. It's the guy selling the shovels. <laughs> it's the guy selling the, exactly. Right? right. And so we, uh, you know, uh, this week, uh, NVIDIA announced this quarter, they announced a record high second quarter revenue, 46.7 billion dollars billion okay this is ridiculous a 90 what is it a 56 percent year over year surge any business would kill for that uh, and it's powered by all this ai stuff uh, the net income and profits mirrored that growth uh with the income jumping 59 or around 26.4 billion so poor uh poor jensen might be running out of money pools to hide his money um, and the staggering $41.1 billion came from the data center segment, uh, which includes the GPUs like its new Blackwell. Blackwells, you can't get them. I have a friend who uh, that I saw on my, my trip to the West Coast who works for NVIDIA. She's, uh, she's a director there. They can't even, the internal people can't get the Blackwell stuff. They can't get a deal on it yeah. to give to their friends. That's how hot this stuff is. Uh, uh, Jensen Wang, the CEO, said that Blackwell is the platform the world has been waiting for, and he's probably right about that. Um, I would say that that's it. Uh, the stock slipped a little because everybody's going, well, can, can they keep this up? Um, so we'll see what it is. And there's some geopolitical issues. The reason that I brought this up and that we think that this is newsworthy for you is, one, you're doing AI. You're going to do AI. Yeah. We're all going to do AI. It's, it's like, so, and right now, the big dog for AI is NVIDIA. So the question is, are you buying NVIDIA? Are you still in this? Or are you pushing for something else? Because I've been looking around a little bit, um, looking for stuff for me, for stuff I want to do. Uh, there is a competing technology finally getting some traction from AMD called Rockham. On the NVIDIA side, it's CUDA. That's the layer that allows you to sort of intermediate between the graphics subsystem or the processors and your programs. And, and it appears that Rockham on the AMD side is gaining some velocity as well. John, what is going on from your perspective here? Yeah, so from my standpoint, the, the growth ramp of of the AI technology, the LLMs out there, is a pretty steep curve right now, but it is hardware constrained it is compute constrained there's just not enough data center power out there right now to to do as much and that's been said you know sam uh 
Sam Altman and others have said, you would actually be seeing better models from us right now if we could apply more compute to it. So that's where Project Stargate comes into play so that we're applying you know, half a trillion dollars into building more data centers. And we're seeing data centers being built all over the place, even outside of that project. And as and somebody's going to be benefiting from that. There's going to be all the vendors that build the hardware. It's the vendors that build the, the cooling and all the other tools that go in there. So again, as we mentioned, it's selling the shovel. So one A, find a business that where you can play in that if you if you want to is to be able to, to to support those those build outs and you'll find a way to make some money that's where the the current way to make money in this is because i mean you're maybe you can start the next open ai maybe but if you can find a way to support this growth that is just taken off right now then that's a that's a great place to be wherever that can be just your little small niche that that's the way i'm looking at it and, and anyway but um and nvidia is one of those and so whether that's an investment standpoint again we're not we're not your investment advisors don't don't take investment advice from us no but, i mean that but they they do make a really compelling product absolutely absolutely so yeah uh, we're, we're and we're really excited about where they're going and just that future i'm uh, you know what the next model is going to look like. And once we have more and more compute, that's going to be really, really exciting. But I have a question for you yeah. out there, our users. Are you looking at alternate methods and what are you looking at? I'm certainly looking at Rockham. I know that uh, some of the internal vendors, Google, for example, who basically invented Tensor, yeah. um, is certainly looking at hardware options. Uh, Apple has a very strong uh, hardware thing, but they're definitely gonna have to go outside of apple for their their model and that's yeah. probably a discussion for next week yeah but um what are you looking at are you happy with nvidia are you able to get your micro circuits is somebody else uh getting your attention we'd be interested to know uh if nothing else to to inform our other viewers but also because we have projects we're interested in looking at too yeah, and and speaking of letting us know, uh, we I do want to share before we wrap up a piece of feedback. So, longtime listener Peter sent in an email regarding last week's episode where we were talking about Unify and whether it was enterprise ready. And what he said was is that he's been a longtime IT director making the decisions about the network for his company, and uh, he did. So he asked me to keep the name of the company and some of the vendors uh, quiet, which I will. But uh, I listened to here. We're talking about a company that's about two thousand employees, and they have six different major locations uh, and some smaller locations around the planet. And he's used a number of different vendors, and due to uh, not being particularly happy with his with his most recent vendor, was looking and did a, a bid out to all the other vendors and did decide on Unify, and it. Part of it was price, and because obviously Unify is going to end up being a, a less expensive solution. But also from a, uh, a capability standpoint, he found that there wasn't a lot that was missing on the Unify standpoint. And he was able to get you know, SD-WAN capabilities. He was able to get all of the visibility that he was looking for and just in security and all the other things. You know, he, he went out and got you know, higher end next generation firewalls and things like that on top of it. But from a network infrastructure standpoint, he was very happy with it. And the performance has been great. He's had it deployed for over a year. And so I thought that was great feedback. So anyway, just- Yeah, I'm not real surprised by that. Yeah. I think that's really interesting. But yeah, that that's a great data point. Yeah. So that is going to cover this episode. We couldn't do this podcast without listeners like you. We would love to hear what you think. Do you have a topic you want us to cover? Do you um, have anything else you want to talk about? Do you want to give us your feedback on what you're using for your own AI models or what you're using on your network? Would you trust Unify? Would you not trust Unify? You want to go back a few episodes, yeah. you can do that. Send email to feedback at itsparkcast.com or hit us up on X at itsparkcast. If you're watching us on YouTube, you can leave a comment down below. We read every single comment, every bit of feedback that we get and if it's particularly insightful or entertaining like peter's was insightful we'll read it out on our broadcast and you'll get to hear your name and comment there um be sure to hit like subscribe and turn on notifications that way you never miss an episode and with that we're going to turn you back to your day from the world of enterprise it take care thank you for coming have a fantastic week